Hello, nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your week in nerddom music edition for the week of August 13th, 2018. This week we've got a bunch of new music to go through. Uh, some unexpected music uh, was found in the research this week, so we're going to talk about that and crazy things happening with Three Doors Down that I kind of just updated myself on, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're talking about a bunch of stuff. Let's hit up the intro real quick. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commando War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On generally nerdy. Yeah. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Before we jump into the news, guys, we got to get through the sponsor. This week, just like the last few times we've done sponsors, is sponsored by Mercari and Poshmark. Uh, I'm probably going to keep pushing these until we clear a little bit more of our stuff out. We've been selling stuff, so the, the inventory has changed. But definitely go check out the links in the description. Uh, you're seeing images cycling through on the screen. Some of the things we have up on those uh, those sites, the, their apps, really. So Mercari and Poshmark, again, are our sponsors. Uh, and I was just informed by my beautiful girlfriend that if you mention the show, if you say that you heard about it on Generally Nerdy, then you will get an extra discount on top of what we're already really just giving stuff away. So go check it out. The links again are down in the description. And now let's jump into the news. First things first, uh, this one, I feel like most people who are into this band know this already, but it's still a really cool thing to talk about. So we're going to talk about Kill Switch Engage. Uh, new record is still being worked on. I would imagine they're in post by now because they're on tour in, in, the, in Europe somewhere. Uh, in London, just a few nights ago, they had Howard Jones, that's right, their second vocalist, <laughs> the guy that they kicked out of the band about six years ago, Howard Jones, that guy, you know, best voice in metal, that dude, he was on stage two nights in a row doing End of Heartache with Jesse, their current slash first vocalist. Uh, and and there's, you can find, oh, I don't, I don't have the links. I'll see if I can find the links before I post this, but there's a couple of links of video of this happening and they're in the O2 Arena in London and the audio from, cause it's fan recorded. So it's somebody on their cell phone. And so it kind of is in and out and it's not the best recording, but even in that mediocre recording format, even on that cell phone, whatever it happened to be, uh, you can hear just how complimentary even their voices are together. And it's, it's, it's a it's a situation where it's like can't they just have both vocalists i love both jesse and howard i think howard has the better voice overall but jesse has so much more emotion so i it's just it's a great trade-off and i wish i was there a lot of us wish we had been there but unfortunately we weren't so we just have to watch these mediocre fan videos hopefully this is the big thing that i'm hoping for hopefully in their next behind the scenes documentary which they do sporadically i'm hoping that they had somebody there recording the event and and taking note and and uh, so that will find its way into the uh, behind the scenes documentary but we won't know and if and when that happens so either way check out the videos again i'm going to try and find links i don't know why i didn't I, I don't have them in my notes right now and usually i just copy paste my notes but yeah uh end of heartache with howard and jesse leach on vocals uh, and it's fantastic those guys just blow me away but we're moving on Next, we're talking about Billy Gibbons. That's right, Mr. ZZ Top. Well, I guess you can't really put it that way. But the guitar player from ZZ Top, the voice of ZZ Top, uh, putting out his second solo album. And it, so far, he's released a couple of tunes. Uh, the name of the album is going to be The Big Bad Blues. The tunes he just released, Rollin' and Tumblin', is the newest tune off of it. But about a week ago, he released this uh, song called Missin' Your Kissin'. 
No, I got that backwards. Rollin' and Tumblin' is the one from a week ago, and Missing Your Kissin' is the one that he just released. And they, I mean, if you like ZZ Top, you're gonna like the Billy Gibbons records. Uh, the last record he put out was called Perfectamundo, and it came out in 2015. This one will be out September 21st of this year, so a little over a month out. And you can find the links to the lyric videos for both of these songs in the description. This... I... I really, I really love Billy Gibbons. Billy Gibbons is one of my favorite guitar players in the world. Um, his guitar on this is perfect. He's so spot on. I just couldn't get the drummer. I felt like wasn't wasn't right where he needed to be. It, it, the pocket was just kind of all over the place. And so uh, the bass player kind of suffered for it too. But Billy, it's, as long as you're just in it to, to listen to Billy, uh, you're not going to go wrong. It sounds like, and his guitar tone is so iconic and, and, and it's slightly different for, for at least what these two songs sound like. It's, it's, it's a evolution of his ZZ top tone, but it still sounds like Billy Gibbons. It's still got that dirty blues distortion and it's, it's got a lot of mud caked on it these days, and but it's still so, you can still hear the tone, you can still hear the notes he's playing, even though it's super muddy. Uh, I just, I, that's why, that's one of the main reasons why I love Billy Gibbons is because his guitar tone is phenomenal. Uh, so yeah, go check out those videos and, and let's talk about what you think of those songs. Are they too much like ZZ Top or is his solo work uh, set apart enough that you can tell the difference between solo Billy and Billy in ZZ Top? Let's talk about that down in the comments. Uh, next is unexpected music news. Well, kind of unexpected music news. It's not uh, It's not news exactly that Weezer did a cover of Toto's Africa. They actually did one other cover of a Toto song, uh, but it's not one that most people know, so I didn't bother putting it in the notes. So they've done two Toto covers, but the big noteworthy one that's been on the top of the charts for the last few weeks is Africa. You know, talking about blessing the rains down in Africa and yeah, all the weird 80s things. And it's a pretty decent cover. I I really like Rivers. I think Rivers writes very well, even though he's an arrogant prick. But I feel like there's a reason for it, because he's got the talent to back up that arrogance. So Weezer is kind of, yeah, I was expected that they were going to do a pretty solid cover, but it doesn't, they didn't really make it a Weezer tune. Like, I feel like most good covers, even if it's a note for note cover, still have an element of the band doing the cover. Like a great example is uh, Welcome to the Machine, the Pink Floyd cover that Shadows Fall did on their first record on the Art of Balance, well their first uh, Century Media record. That sounds like, it sounds like Shadows Fall, but it is a note for note cover of the Floyd song. Uh, Mushroom Head did a Floyd cover too, along those same lines. Uh, this Weezer tune, if you were to not have heard the Toto version for a while, and then the Weezer tune came on the radio, you would think you were listening to the Toto version. So I guess there's something to be said about that. I just, I feel like it would have been cooler had they done their, you know, kind of has still had some Weezer elements to it. Anyway, we're bird walking about the non-news. The actual news bit is Toto now put out a cover of Weezer's Hash Pipe. And this is kind of a note for note cover, but it sounds like Toto. It doesn't sound like Weezer. And it's, it, the they made it their own without straying from the song. They, they have a, the synth lead in the middle of it. There is a definite difference in the vocal delivery. Uh, it's, it's surprisingly good. I'm not a huge Toto fan just because, you know, Toto. Eh. But 
this was this was good this i dug it it's definitely worth a listen to you can find a link to it in the description so you can take a listen to uh l and let me know what you think am i am i backwards should i like the weezer version better or should i like the toto cover better the, let's let's have that argument in the comments as well uh next up on the list though we are talking about three doors down and i uh, this might not be news to you but it was definitely news to me, and there's actually been a, a new development in the last few days. So, for those of you that don't know, and kind of care, Three Doors Down, their original bass player, so not the bass player that is currently playing with the band. Uh, he's He's been out of the band for... Uh, I didn't write that down in the notes. He's been out of the band for a little while, so for about two years, if I remember correctly, since like 2016, maybe even 2015. So, he has been out of the band, so this is not a direct reflection on Three Doors Down. Uh, people have reasons to hate them for, you know, besides this. But he was arrested two months ago, the original bass player, arrested two months ago for Ill illegal possession of firearms and narcotics and has been sitting in jail awaiting court for those charges. Because you have to be in jail and then go to court and then get sentenced to prison. You don't just go straight to prison. So he's waiting in jail <laughs> to be sentenced. And then he caught another charge. And this is what happened in the last few days. He got caught somehow getting drugs into the facility, into the jail facility. So now... He has a new felony for introduction of contraband into a, a, a federal building or something along those lines. And just, what? <laughs> um, yeah, that's insane. That's just, I. they were supposed to be like good old boys and uh, pop uh, idols. And <laughs> it just cracks me up that three doors down, probably one of the safest bands had their bass players going through stuff like this i just i i it was so crazy we had to talk about it and now we did so we're moving on next we are talking about new music finally got some new music from a couple of bands i've actually been waiting for and one band we knew was coming actually i think this is uh we'll, we'll get to that first of the new music is high on fire uh, the Matt Pike fronted three piece is putting out a new record called Electric Messiah. The first song off of the record is also called Electric Messiah. The record will be out October 5th. Uh, you can find the lyric video link in the description. This, I like, so I, the, my buddy who, who got me turned on to High on Fire, uh, just can't shut up about them every time they put out a new record. It's so much better than the last record. It's it's such a great evolution. And while he's not entirely wrong, sometimes the enthusiasm is a little too much because, yes, they do evolve pretty regularly, but it's not the same amount of evolution between records. Like, I, I wish I could pull up ex ex exact examples but uh, basically, there was about three or four records. There was a clump of records, about three or four of them, that kind of could have all been the same record in my head, just because they weren't set apart from each other enough in their catalog. Uh, so far, and we've only heard one song, so we can't jump to any conclusions based off of that. But so far, this High on Fire record definitely seems like a drastic evolution. This sounds like... so. If you're unfamiliar with the sound of High and Fire, it's kind of a, and I don't know, I, I, I'm going to get some hate for saying it this way, but the best way I can think to describe it is they are a bit more of an aggressive version of Motorhead. And that's kind of saying something, because Motorhead's pretty damn aggressive. But, uh, it, I... Motorhead had a bit more of a balance. They, they, you could hear all three instrumentalists, and Lemmy's voice was very distinct. Well, High on Fire is a little lopsided. It's, it's pretty guitar heavy. There's a crap ton of distortion on that guitar, um, and Matt Pike's voice kind of sounds like Lemmy and has always. But this, th this Electric Messiah song is. 
is the is the the pinnacle of that in in the best way possible, if that makes any sense. Uh, and and it's actually the name Electric Messiah is an homage to Lemmy, so it's kind of come full circle. He's always acknowledged that people say that about him. I don't know that he's ever really said that about himself until this record. I just read an interview with him where. It, he 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 had a dream, and that's where kind of the genesis of the song. He had a dream where Lemmy was hazing him, was initiating him into the group, as it were. And I I think this is a great way to pay homage to somebody who is so iconic and whose sound you quite honestly have been aping since the inception of your band. So it's it's great, it's great. And on top of all of that. Kurt Ballou is producing this record again. He's apparently produced their last two records, uh, and just just it, production value is so much more ob more. I don't know. It's it's not really obvious, but it's it's to a point where the subtlety is makes it. If that makes any, I don't know. I I, I might just be rambling. If I am, leave, leave that comment down below, but we're going to move on to the next bit of new music. This is another new song from Otep's Cult 45. Name of the song is Shelter in Place. Again, link to the video is in the description. Um, all right, so we're going to ignore all of the political elements of this song. Which is very hard to do because her polit Otep's politics are just so incredibly misinformed and terribly misguided. Um, so that aside, that we're not going to break apart her politics or poke holes in her silly little theories. We're just going to talk about the execution of this song. So every bit of media about this record that you have seen or you've read or people have been talking about basically unless it's unless it's somebody who didn't get the official press release and isn't trying to push the record's narrative uh so like read read anything on blabbermouth read anything on the big publications on the big websites about this record and it's basically going to be repeating itself it's talking about how otep is a driving force in change in the heavy music community and how she's so enlightened and blah 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 and then it'll get to the technical details and how they recorded this entire record in the same studio with the exact same gear right down to the microphone. That's a beta. She, she records on a beta 58. Everything was exactly the same as the uh, Sevis Tra album, which was the album that blew up because that album was incredible. Again, politics definitely aside that album technically speaking and and uh, uh stylistically speaking was phenomenal was so good the mixing was great the production value was great the lyrics again minus their content the actual delivery of the lyrics and the uh vocal rhyme schemes and just all of that were so expertly executed that she they have definitely struggled emulating that or repeating that success since the closest they got was the follow-up record which was house of secrets which still didn't sell nearly as many albums because the novelty of otep's politics wore off so I, they've put out apparently like eight records something like that I'm, I'm exaggerating but it's actually probably pretty close to that um so about six since those two records and this will be the seventh ish since then uh so record number nine if i'm not remembering that incorrectly and the quality I, I will say this the quality for this record as opposed to the previous records since uh the the house of secrets since that record everything has gotten worse this one production value and everything wise has gotten slightly better but will never <laughs> never equal the Sevis Tri record. This song is a great example of that. The instrumentation is bland. There is no excitement in the, what those guys are playing. Her her lyrics are are meandering in a 
in a less artful way than because Otep has never been super direct. And even when she is super direct, she's using vocabulary that is just meant to be flowery and, and more emotive than is necessary. This is just her spitting words that sound semi-political without any conviction. Like, that's the biggest thing I feel like that is missing is there's there's no expression of conviction in these lyrics, in the delivery of these lyrics. And the, just the production, the everything is just right on top of everything else. So you can't, it's kind of muddy and you can't pick out certain things. And again, the, the, uh, the, the playing, the, the instruments just, there's nothing there. There is absolutely nothing of substance there. And I including the politics, you could include that in that statement. Nothing of substance. Um, I mean, if, if you like heavy stuff, if you like, the new metal-y kind of stuff, then check it out and tell me if you think I'm wrong. But I just, I can't get behind this Colt 45 record. I'm sorry, I guess. But then we're moving on to the last bit of news this week, and it is another new song. And this one is, we're stepping out of the realm of the heavy, and we're going over to the pop gypsy kind of side of things. Uh, Devachka, local local band-ish, uh, their vocalist lives in California anymore, but they're from Colorado, um, have finally put out new music. It's just one song. The name of the song is This Night Fall... Oh, wait, no, that's the record. The name of the song is Angels. The name of the record is This Night Falls Forever. The record will be out uh, this month, August 24th. Um, you can see the lyric or the, uh, the, the audio-only video in, if you follow the link in the description. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know Devochka, I like, like I said, when we were, when entering the piece is they're kind of gypsies. They have this kind of gypsy sound, but it's beautiful pop love songs that they generally write. Uh, the reason they, their, their biggest claim to fame kind of is, uh, the soundtrack for Little Miss Sunshine. That's kind of what blew them up. But they, they're solid songwriters and solid performers. I've seen them twice now. And just this song, I feel like, is going to translate beautifully to their live show. Because even just listening to this, you can envision them playing it. You, you, you sit down and you close your eyes and you can picture where each instrumentalist is. Just the, the production value on this was it is is better than most pop production uh, because it's not so shiny that it loses its soul um and that's a real big thing with the vodka is they obviously feel the music that they play they obviously care about the notes that their fingers are producing or their voice is producing it's a beautiful thing uh go check it out the, uh, it, again it's it's more on the pop side but it's I, you can't. <laughs> Devochka is Devochka. You can't say they're a pop band because yeah, sure they're they're they kind of play rock and roll ish. But I, I, again, it's Devochka. There's no real sub genre sub categorization you can list that you don't also have to then quantify with seven other sub categorizations. It's just Devochka. So check it out if you like sappy heartwarming songs. The Vodka is a band that you should listen to. Beautiful, beautiful lyrics. This song specifically isn't the best example of their sound in general because this one is like upbeat and driving and again, not bad at all. This is actually a great song. They just don't have a lot of these tunes, which is again why it will translate very well live because they need a couple more songs in their set, I feel like, to, to kind of give that push to, to make it more of an event for uh, an eventful performance but just yeah great stuff check out the link in the video that's where this week ends i know i ramble thank you guys for sitting through the ramblings what did i miss in music this week what should we talk about next week let me know in the comments down low 
If, though, you want to go deeper into the conversation, jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is the place where you can go get all of the freebies, all the social media links, and the store links. I did, I have updated it now, so you can go get the Generally Nerdy shirt, the General Lee Nerdy shirt that I'm wearing right here. You can go get that through the website, generallynerdy.net. Or if you want to support the site more directly, there is a Patreon, patreon.com slash generally nerdy. Four tiers, bottom tier is just a dollar a month. That dollar goes an incredible long way. So go check out patreon.com slash generally nerdy. If you are new to the channel, click the subscribe button. If you like this episode, click that like button. If you're falling behind on your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. But before we go, guys, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.